Eric Rowan to Impact Wrestling. Now, there's been a little bit of discussion over the last couple of weeks that Eric Rowan, former WWE superstar, is weighing up his options as to what his next move is in professional wrestling. Now, Eric Rowan has done quite a few interviews recently. He is now going by the new name Eric Redbeard. He recently did an interview with Chris Van Vliet. If you haven't checked that out, be sure to do so. It's a fantastic interview. Chris Van Vliet, at this point, is the king of pro wrestling interviews, isn't he? On YouTube and on social media, does a fantastic job, especially his recent work with Andrew Yang was just absolutely fantastic. So be sure to check him out. But during a recent interview with Chris Van Vliet, he was asked why he chose the new ring name. Of course, Eric Rowan is now going by Eric Redbeard. He said, quote, it's pretty easy. All my handles are already Eric Redbeard anyway. I guess the most obvious part was when I was let go, I was basically banished and exiled from this big company. Some other guy was banished from the land and had to make a name for himself was Eric the Red. So I had a red beard. It's an easy transition for me. Now, that's a bit of a non-story there. But the interesting point was when he was obviously asked, you know, what's next for you? What are your options? What are you considering as the next chapter in your career after WWE? Most importantly, are we going to see an Eric Rowan and Brody Lee reunion in AEW? Of course, both superstars were members of the Wyatt family with Bray Wyatt in WWE for many, many years. They then branched off and became the Bludgeon Brothers in WWE, became multiple times SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And then they also reunited during Eric Rowan's singles push in 2019 when they took on the likes of Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns too. So, a lot of people thought that because these two guys, right, they've been joined at the hip for many, many years at this point. Are we going to see Eric Rowan and Brody Lee in AEW? Of course, Brody Lee is the current AEW TNT champion, leader of the Dark Order, the Exalted One. And here's what Eric Rowan had to say about a potential reunion with Brody Lee in AEW. He said, quote, it's wrestling. You never say never. Me and him have always been joined at the hip. I know he had very high singles aspirations. He wants to be the world champion and all that. To me, I just want to wrestle and have fun doing it and be creative, whether it's as a character backstage and doing that. I have fun doing that stuff. I have fun in the ring. I had fun doing the tag stuff. I don't care either way. I love performing. He wants to be the best in the world at what he does. He's very meticulous with how he is in the ring. I want to give him a chance. I don't want to step on any toes. I don't want to be there like, oh, here I am again. Let him do whatever he wants to do. I'm sure we are going to come around and do something in the future together. But for right now, let him do his own thing. Let me do my own thing and let's meet back in the, in a year or whatever, end quote. So I thought that was very, very telling. Those comments there by Eric Crumb were very, very telling, specifically the point of, I want to give him a chance. I don't want to step on any toes. I don't want to be there and be like, oh, here I am again. Let him do what he wants to do. Let me do my own thing and let's meet back in a year or whatever. So that does open the door. A lot of people thought that when Eric Rowan was released by WWE, given that Brody Lee was with AEW at the time and Brody Lee was the exalted one. And at that time, back in April, Brody Lee was fresh off of making his AEW Dynamite debut as the exalted one of the Dark Order. A lot of people thought, well, it's inevitable. It's inevitable that Rowan is going to go to AEW and we're going to have the Brody Lee, Eric Rowan reunion. But given those comments there that he's basically said, look, He's doing his own thing. I want to give him a chance to do his own thing. I don't want to step on his toes. I don't want to just be like, oh, it's back and Brody Lee and Eric Rowan's back together again. I think that opens the door to Eric Rowan to impact wrestling. I really do. Now, out of all of those guys that were and girls and producers and talents and agents and whatever that were released by WWE back in April due to COVID-19 related budget cuts, out of all the names left on the free market, because a lot of those names now have been snapped up, they've started to appear at other companies, you know, whether it is Miro and AEW, who I felt was the biggest name, then you've got the Good Brothers, who are arguably the second biggest names on there, they're in Impact Wrestling right now, you've got EC3, Heath, etc., Eric Young, of course. Out of all of those names left on the free market right now, you would probably say that Eric Rohn is the biggest. And that's not just because of the other names that have gone. This was a guy that was one of those big names anyway. Eric Rowan, when he was released by WWE back in April, was up there with one of the most surprising names on that list because he was featured in. He had been on WWE TV consistently for a long time. 2019 
He was working with Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan was the WWE champion at WrestleMania. Eric Rowan was a part of that. Eric Rowan feuded with Daniel Bryan. They were tag team champions last year. On top of that, he was a guy that was working with the biggest star in the company, the biggest full-time star in the company in WWE, Roman Reigns, and he was beating Roman Reigns. At Clash of Champions last year, one year ago pretty much to this point, Eric Rowan was defeating Roman Reigns on pay-per-view. Yes, he was working with him and beating him. And people don't, or at the very least, shouldn't forget that. That's how big of a name that Eric Rowan was and and is. And WWE obviously felt at the time, as I do right now, that there is money in Eric Rowan. Look at the guy. Just look at him. So this was a guy that was working with the top talent in the company last year on SmackDown. He's on the free agent list right now. He's one of the biggest free agents around. He, He really is. And people shouldn't forget that. Now, did all of that momentum that he built up on SmackDown, being this singles guy, cutting promos, working with the likes of Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, yes, it got killed when he went to Monday Night Raw because he had the stupid cage gimmick. And let's talk about the Rowan cage thing because he's spoken about it. Now, during this interview, he opened up that originally, originally the plan was it was meant to be a rat. It was meant to be a rat in a cage, Billy Corgan smashing pumpkins, I guess, but it was meant to be a rat and it was going to be, that was the thing, right? He'd fallen in love with this rat. And the idea of having this rat in the cage is that Eric Rowan was going to feud with Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw at the time. Now, it may seem crazy at this point because so much has changed since then. At the time, Seth Rollins was a babyface. He was arguably the top babyface on Monday Night Raw, right? He'd won the Universal Championship at SummerSlam from Brock Lesnar after winning it at WrestleMania earlier on in the year. He was the guy. And it wasn't working. The fans didn't get behind it. They turned on Rollins and eventually he had to turn heel. Now, the point was, is that Eric Rowan was going to feud with Seth Rollins, I guess, over the Universal Championship on Monday Night Raw. And the plan was, is that Rollins was going to kill the rat or accidentally kill it. Rowan, because he'd become so attached to it, was going to go on this massive rampage, destroying everyone on Monday Night Raw and was going to feud with Seth Rollins. The issue that happened there is that Seth Rollins... At the very, very start of this Rowan storyline, he turned heel and they changed plans. Plans change and Seth Rollins turned heel. And then whatever was meant to be in the cage, it no longer was a rat. And then WWE didn't know what it was going to be in the cage. And eventually it was revealed to be a giant mechanical robot spider that looked absolutely terrible. If it's up there with... The Mae Young Hand, it's up there with Rikishi running over Steve Austin. It's up there with Hornswoggle being Mr. McMahon's illegitimate son. Hornswoggle, again, being the anonymous Raw General Manager as one of the worst reveals in WWE history. And what a joke it was. What an absolute joke that whole thing was. And what a shame, honestly, because let's be honest. And if, if you say this isn't true, I think you're lying to yourself. For a while there, that gimmick had people. It absolutely had people. It had people's interest what is in the cage because mystery storylines work. Mystery storylines, they do work. They pique people's interest. People want to know what the end game is, what is going to be the reveal. Support for Wrestle News 365 is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Now, Manscaped, for all of my UK fans out there, Manscaped just launched in the UK. Over here in the United Kingdom, we have gone for years and years and years without using the right tools for the job. But now, you can be one of the first men in England to experience their life-changing product. But it's not just limited to all of the great fans over here in the UK. This offer goes worldwide, so all of my friends over in America and around the world that are listening to this, this offer still does apply for you. You can still use our code. Uh, But I've got to tell you a quick story first. Now, there have been so many times, right? I'm a guy. Uh, you gotta, you got to groom down there, fellas, right? That's the most important thing. you got to keep yourself trimmed. you got to keep yourself proper. And uh, a lot of the time, I've been guilty of this, of using the wrong tools for the job. I've had incidences, I'm not afraid to say it, where things have been nicked, snagged, or in fact cut down there because I wasn't being careful enough and using the right equipment. Now, that just shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. You don't want to be worrying about cutting yourself down there. Do you know how painful that is? I can tell you, it hurts quite a lot. And I wish... And hope to God it never happens to me again and it won't happen to me ever again because I'm using Manscaped products. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team 
has perfected the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. Big statement, but it's absolutely true. They have just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 in the UK. It's also available around the world as well. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. So those cuts and snags that I was telling you about before are a thing of the past. And let me tell you, when I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can get a longer, perfect shave. And not only that, you don't want to be cutting yourself and trimming yourself in the, all over the bathroom, getting hair all over the place. That's just disgusting. The lawnmower has a waterproof technology that allows you to groom in the shower, so no more mess. And one of the coolest features, one of my favorite features about the lawnmower is the LED light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming experience. So you can shave longer, you can shave more precisely, and you can shave in the shower. What more did I need to tell you? They've also upgraded to a 7000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology and let's not forget about the charging stand you can show off your mower loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB so if you are listening to me speak right now I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself let's get that bush to tush clean and you can get 20% off and free shipping yeah you heard me right there 20% off and free shipping all you have to do is use the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com make your testies their besties that's 20% off and free shipping not only are you getting 20% off you're getting free shipping as well with the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code 365 wrestle your balls will thank you it's just a shame that wwe's track record and historically do terrible when it comes to reveals in professional wrestling but it had people for a while now it lost people pretty quickly because the whole what's in the cage gimmick went on for so long that i think eventually nothing nothing was going to live up to what was in the cage at that time nothing ever was so and i think the reason it went on for so long is because they didn't know eventually what was going to be in that cage and then you end up with the giant mechanical spider which is awful now, Rowan, even during this interview with Chris Van Vliet, admitted and he, he pitched, he said that he spoke to people and he pitched having the world's smallest woman in there, which I thought was a fantastic idea. It was a, a SAG accredited actress. She's been on American Horror Story and he was going to pitch to bring her in for one day. They were going to shoot multiple vignettes and we were going to have Eric Rowan with this tiny woman in a cage and not that he was trapping her there, but he was trying to shield her from the insecurities and the terrible people out there in the world and then she would disappear or something they could do something like that that's great that is an awesome idea because we haven't seen anything like that that's the kind of creative mind you could get if you brought eric rowan into impact wrestling that's that's different that's unique and i think that sounds like a great idea and to be honest and this isn't limited to the chris van vliet interview that eric rowan did every interview I've seen with Eric Rowan since his release from WWE, I'm floored. I'm floored with just how creative and how character how character driven this guy is. Not only is he a giant man and he's got a great look and he's got the heavy metal shirts and the, the tattoos, he can work a great match, but he's also a guy that gets it. And by that, I mean, he understands the storytelling part of it. He wants to tell a story and he wants to have a character. He's really into the character wrestling. He gets the character elements of the professional wrestling business. He gets the subtle creative storytelling elements that are so vital, in my opinion, in a great professional wrestling story. That is why, that is why, not on top of him being a great, a big name and a great worker and just a giant man, the character stuff, this is why he would be so great in Impact Wrestling for me. Because if you look at Impact Wrestling right now, if you look at how they present their product, I think a driving factor in the recent successes of Impact Wrestling is the characters and the characters that they have on television every single week. Impact arguably at this point has more character driven storylines than maybe they've ever had. They're so focused on storytelling, whether it is through matches, but more in terms of promos and in terms of characters. The matches in Impact, they are great. But the story is much, much more important to Impact's presentation at this point. 
You look at Eric Young and Rich Swan. That's a story. That's characters right there. You look at even Wrestle House recently, and I know Wrestle House was over the top and slightly comedic and tongue in cheek, but that was all about characters, all about characters and storytelling there. So I think with the mindset that Eric Rowan's proven in these interviews, Eric Rowan fits in there absolutely perfectly. He's probably a better fit in Impact than he certainly would be in AEW because I just think the 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 creative element that he has in his mind when it comes to creating a character, having nuances of a character, I think just suits Impact per- perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Now, he said during that interview, and this is an important thing to talk about as well, he said during that interview... Everyone expects him to go to Brody Lee. Everyone expects him just to show up in as a member of the Dark Order, second in command with Brody Lee in AEW. And, you know, that could happen. I mean, it absolutely could happen. But I don't think Rowan wants that right now. And to be honest, I'm not sure that Brody Lee would want that either. Brody Lee is doing his own thing in AEW. He's the TNT champion. He's elevating himself into a main event singles guy right now. He's doing fantastic. I think the work he's done with the Dark Order in elevating them to a faction that had no direction, no real purpose, was stupid. He has elevated that into a credible faction that has a real true gimmick. They're a cult, but they try and bring people that are failing and bring them into succeeding. He's this charismatic, is a slight play on Vincent Mann, I think, kind of gimmick, Mr. Brody Lee, but it's working. And I don't think he needs Eric Rowan right now, and I don't think Eric Rowan needs Brody Lee. And Eric Rowan said it himself. He doesn't want to step on that. Eric Rowan wants to do his own thing. That's what was so great about Eric Rowan on SmackDown last year is that he was on his own. The first time ever in his WWE career, he got to step out on his own outside of the shadow of the Wyatt family and Bray Wyatt, outside of the shadow of Brody Lee and the Bludgeon Brothers, outside of the shadow of Daniel Bryan. And he did a good job. He did do a good job. He cut good promos. He had great matches. And I thought he was an entertaining character. He proved that he can hang. He can cut a promo. He can do a good job. So, of course, if you're Impact Wrestling, of course they are interested. It's no it's no doubt that Impact Wrestling look at a guy like Eric Rowan. They look at a guy that was beating Roman Reigns, just last year on TV. They look at a guy that was part of the Wyatt family, part of fantastic moments on WWE television. He feuded with Daniel Bryan and he has a great look and a great mind for the business. Of course, Impact Wrestling is interested in someone like that. Now, when it comes to money, I think obviously Impact can afford it. I've said this in every Impact Wrestling video that I do about potential signings is that Impact Wrestling, they're owned by Anthem. Anthem has a lot of money and of course Anthem can afford it. However, what you do have to think about is that Impact, of course, will have a budget. Regardless of how wealthy Anthem are, that doesn't necessarily mean that Impact are as wealthy as Anthem, even though they're owned by it, if you understand my purpose. Everyone has a budget. Every company has a budget. And if you look at Impact Wrestling's roster, it's still not a huge roster by any means. And Impact Wrestling, look, they've brought in a lot of names this year. And despite Anthem having their millions, we are still in a pandemic. The company obviously is still losing money. But I think a positive thing to look at from Impact's point of view is they don't really make their money on gate receipts anywhere. They don't do many live events or anything like that. They make their money, well, they did previously off their TV deal, and obviously they get it through Anthem now. So they get their money through sponsorship, advertisements, their merch, and their pay-per-view numbers, which all have done very, very well this year. So they probably are making money just as they would be anyway. There's probably a little bit of a dip because they're not having fans in the arenas, but that's about it. So a deal here between Eric Redbeard, Eric Rowan, Rowan, whatever you want to call him, and Impact Wrestling to me is possible. It's a possible deal. Now, obviously, you can't rule out other companies. You never can. Is AEW a possibility? Look, of course it is. While Brody Lee is there, it obviously is a possibility. But like I said previously, I just don't see either guy wanting to do that so soon. Why Why at this point, why do you repeat what you did in WWE? Miro said it best in an interview the other day when he was like, I loved what I did in WWE. I, I was frustrated, but I, I hold no ill will. I'm out of there now. I'm doing something different. I don't want to talk about WWE anymore. I want to be Miro. I want to do whatever. And I think it's the same with Brody Lee. Yes, okay, it was great what happened in the WWE. The Wyatt family, the Bludgeon Brothers, he was frustrated though. He wanted to do something more. And I think Eric Rowan was frustrated. He wanted to do something more and he was getting there and he got the rug pulled from beneath him. And why would you go back to what you did in WWE? You'd want to do something different. Move on. You're capable of doing more than that. 
and both of them want to prove it. And Brody Lee is proving it in AEW right now. So I think Eric Rowan would want to do the same. And maybe AEW isn't the right place for that. He maybe needs to go somewhere else to prove everyone wrong. Now, I always bring in New Japan because I think Rowan is the type of guy that would just do so fantastic in New Japan. Like I've said a million times before, big guys in New Japan draw and they are money in New Japan. That style works. Big guys always do well in New Japan. Historically, look at the names. Stan Hansen, Bruiser Brody, Big Van Vader. All of those guys drew absolutely huge in New Japan. Now, obviously, again, we are in a pandemic at the moment. So obviously going to Japan right now is tough. Not impossible, but but tough. But especially going from the United States, I'm not sure what the situation is from flying from the United States right now. I know that the likes of Will Ospreay have actually flown to Japan, but he was over here in the UK, and it's slightly different. I'm not sure they're on the quarantine list, so it's very, very, it's very, very difficult. But New Japan are running shows in the USA right now, so who knows? We saw the likes of uh, the former Darren Young is going to be part of those New Japan shows, and. We've got the G1 card coming soon, so who knows? Who knows what we're going to see? But Eric Rowan, at some time down the line, I'd love to see him in New Japan. I think he would suit that company perfectly. But as far as domestically, I think I think Impact can pull it off. I really do. You're looking at a guy, in my opinion, you can easily make your world champion. And he can make you a ton of money. And he can make you so much money in someone like Eric Rowan. I just think, I think it's inevitable. I think it would be a fantastic, a fantastic addition. I really do. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on the potential of Eric Rowan going to Impact Wrestling? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys on this channel. If you've enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.